The Cubs lose the opener and Justin Steele. Oh, here we go. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy. Sam and I are lifelong fans, taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Thank you for being part of the show and making Locked On Cubs your first listen today. And the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, like the video, and comment anything below. Cubs lose 4-3 to three on opening day to the Rangers in 10 innings and... Lose Justin Steele to a hamstring injury. Still need updates on that throughout the weekend. Not going to know anything probably until Friday or Saturday. But it was a crazy game at Arlington. Cubs carried leads of 1-0, 2-1, and 3-2. Uh, but, Sam, they do lose this one and, and by a string in more ways yeah. than one. I mean, for me, you know, the steel thing is the headline here. Yeah. Um, this is, this is one of 162. Um, if steel could come out of this, just missing maybe a start or two, it's fine. Um, which I know we're going to talk about as far as the game goes, you know, it, it, it felt, it felt kind of like deja vu. Uh, you know, you, you get a huge break there in the eighth inning. That was, that was a foul huge. ball, huge break. And Alzali has a chance to, you know, uh, uh, come in and shut the door and, and the first battery blows it. I mean, it was, you know, I, I, I had, you know, I must be, I must be fair because if David Ross were the manager of this team, I would come out immediately and say, I was absolutely shocked that Garrett Cooper hit with a man on second, nobody out instead of Mike Talkman. So I'm going right. to come out and say that in the 10th inning that at bat ultimately cost him. But to me, you know, it, it's, it's steel number one. And then, you know, it's, you have a 3-2 lead late against a great team. It was a great baseball game. You got to shut the door. You got to shut the door. Yeah, and I always go, you know, even if you go back to front, I will say that as bad as it was late in the game, and even maybe making the case of you shouldn't have been there to begin with because it was a non-foul ball call right. when Mastro was up. Bush comes in from second. He does a, a Coach Cozy play and just goes 180 feet on one pitch. But only two runs off of Aldi proved to be detrimental. Yeah. You know, this was a guy that that wasn't that good in the opener. He sure. didn't produce a lot of swing and miss. Um, shoot, when Swanson struck out to end the fourth inning, uh, struck out swinging, that was literally the only the second swing and miss of the game. Right. And you had good swings. You had hard contact, but you only put up two runs. Uh, the Almonte sweeper. Bugs me a lot. At the same Terrible. time, Terrible pitch. Leiter did a nice job yeah. cleaning him up and then going one more. He went one and two thirds uh, perfect innings, I believe, with three Ks. Uh, you know, there you have good moments. You have the two out rally in the sixth with Sayan and, and Bellinger back to back doubles, and Bellinger's is with two strikes. Um, but for for the end of the game to to happen like that and and Cooper leading off the tenth instead of Talkman it is a major surprise. Yep, it is. What? What's an, and then Cooper strikes out looking. Yeah, uh, Cubs with four evaded their strikeouts today. Looking, guys, you get three swings. You just had thirty-one games of spring training, a whole camp in AZ. What are we doing? Yeah, it's opening think- day swing. I think council probably was just going reverse split because uh, that's what Robertson is. But I just trust Talkman in those spots. That's why, to me, that's why he's, he's on the team. Of course you do. I just trust him in those spots. It's 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 bigger. It's not a matchup thing with him. He proved last year against Devin Williams what he could do in big spots. Um, right. But to me, it's one baseball game. It's not about positives. It's not about negatives. You know, they 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 had to lead the ninth and lost. This is the exact right. type of games we talk about. It's a one run game again, and, and you're probably not going to have a ton of games that you're leading in the ninth here early on outside of Colorado. You're playing against a very good team. This Rangers lineup is terrific. Um, I mean, they are extraordinary. So, you know, I think 
for me, I, it, it, the, the it was loss, there for the taking. It was the, lo- the loss only feels bad because of what happened to Justin Steele. I mean, okay. it, it, it would, it wouldn't feel good, but it's I like, thought, I, I think it was a bad loss. No, no, it was and a bad I'm loss. No, it was a bad loss. But I'm saying is like this doomsday feeling is, is, well, is I, and, and it's opening day. We, we foreshadowed some of that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a football stadium in there. If we find out over the weekend that Justin Steele is going to miss two starts, this loss then just right. becomes one that you, you you kick away and come back from. But to me, you know, I, I thought Nico Horner was awful tonight. Yes, uh, and, he and was half. Yeah, and and the, and that's some that's some spring training stuff. Like Nico Horner was awful all spring, right? And and and, and he he had a he had a bad air. And by the way. You know, everyone's going to talk about how if we if we won the game, how that foul ball wasn't a you know, and it was it was it was a foul ball. It was, but don't, but don't forget, Magical drove in a run, and we got a pretty unlucky bounce on that ground rule double. So yeah, if that's a, if that's a stand up double, the Cubs right. get a run there. You know, it was just it I'm was a out. it was it was just funny because you know as the game was progressing in my head, I was like, hey, this is the games that we lost last year. These are the games we lost right. last year. So let's find a way to win. And I got to tell you, once Smiley retired um, the, the the Wyatt kid, I thought we were getting out of that inning, and I, I thought we were in pretty good shape. But I mean, it, was it was a great un- play by Mastro, but if yeah, the and game it, is tied going to the bottom half, the home team's going to win. Yeah, and and to me again, Alzali, Jankowski, th- this, is, this is something to watch. You know, Alzali, he, he had a very good season last year. I believe it's Alzale now. I think he changed his uh, pronunciation. Uh, Alzale, he had a very good season last year. But everybody, even Lance has come out here. He doesn't have closer stuff. And the uh. minute and the minute he went 3-2 to Jankowski, laid one in there, you can't give up a home run to that guy in that spot. That's a punch and Judy, pinch hit hitter that you can't let beat you in, in a game like that. So, um, right. I think everybody's going to be fine. I think Hap's going to be fine. I think Nico's going to be fine. But if Justin Steele is out for a long period of time, then they will not be fine. All right. Well, let's uh, get to that then coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament, whether you're betting out a big upset or a one seed. It's time to go dancing on America's number one. Sports book right now. New customers get two hundred dollars in bonus bets if your first five dollar bet wins. That's two hundred bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, and you can even pick who's going to win it all. Sam, how are you doing over there? Uh, for new <laughs> listeners with us right now, Sam is a uh, diehard Illinois fan as well. Uh, him and his father, uh, who I believe is in Sam's place right now, he's right to my and right. It's halftime, right? Halftime right now, up 10. Uh, feels like we should be up about 15, up 20. Up 10, wow. Yeah, but it, it's been kind of a crazy game, but um, I'm here I'm here with you guys. Okay, okay. Uh, we're going to keep tabs on that throughout the evening, and hopefully Illinois gets a game on Saturday as well. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. FanDuel, official partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. We're back here on Lockdown Cubs. Justin Steele did exit the game in the bottom of the fifth inning, fielding a bunt. And as he tossed the ball to first, he rolled over and he injured his hamstring. And we got breaking news, Matt. Okay, per Craig, go ahead. Per Craig Council, Justin Steele unfortunately does have a left hamstring strain, not okay. tightness. He will get an MRI tomorrow. Council said Steele will likely go on the injured list, and he yeah. did not want to speculate on whether Steele will only need a minimum IL stint. That's very, very bad news. All right, so a hamstring strain. Now, the level of it does matter. Hopefully that comes back good, because I remember last May when Nico Horner rounded second, mm-hmm. and we thought his season was over. Uh, I'm exaggerating, but we thought he was going to be out a month plus. And right. which is usually what a severity of a strain is like. Mm-hmm. It's usually about four to five weeks historically. And Horner did miss 10 games. Um, so if there's a comp to that in any way, shape or form, I hope that happens uh, because then Steele misses, you know, let's even just be conservative and say three, three starts or something like that. Um, you know, I'm always one initially in terms of levels of concern as a fan. And just as a baseball human, 
for a pitcher. Okay, I, I know I'm the optimist, but I'm going to reverse it right after. If a pitcher has an injury that's not an arm injury, I feel better. However, the Cubs, after game one of 162, cannot afford an injury, even for three times through the rotation or more, to their number one pitcher. And so as good as this might turn out, because, yes, it's not the arm. It's not an ACL, which, you know, maybe for a glimpse we thought, you know, it entered our mind at least, the, the dark parts of our mind. It's not an arm injury. That puts you out of season, right, and go knock on some wood. That doesn't happen to any Cubs pitchers this year. But a hamstring strain that would uh, produce a, a month turn uh, of the schedule is, is brutal. And mm-hmm. that's worse than the loss this evening because tonight's a decimal point of the season. I hope we could comp it to Horner last May. All we know right now is Steele's going to the IL. Well, like ben a, Brown is probably pitching Wednesday. But hopefully the severity isn't that bad uh, because if it is, I think the Cubs are uh, in rough shape. Yeah, and, you know, I don't – you know, I'm not a doctor. Um, I think that's pretty clear. But – I, based on what I saw and the way he walked off the field, I mean, he walked like he strained his hamstring. And you got to remember, yes. even and, though and I saw, and I looking at the replay, Sam, after I thought it was a knee, yeah. he went to hamstring right away. Yeah. And, and, you know, the hamstring, even though it's not the arm, these are all things that impact, you know, where your weight is and how yes. much of you're using right. your arm. As a pitcher, yeah. And the fact that Council didn't come out, if, if, if he felt optimistic, he'd say it after a loss like that. So the fact that he just came out and said he can't even comment how long the IL stint's going to be, you know, I'm not going to speculate how much it is. Yeah. But but we're, we're looking at 15 days minimum, probably, right? Right. It, well, yeah, that's how uh, – that's just normal IL procedure. Yeah, and, and I would I would guess a little bit more than that. And then when you look at it, that's going to be the one of the hardest parts – of the season. So, um, well, we'll find out Saturday, I think, or I, I, I bet you, we don't, I bet you all we find out is that he is a, a hamstring strain. They go to the IL and then we'll probably wait. And then we're in the lurch. Yeah. We're in the lurch, but now it's just, it's about survival mode. You know, it's about survival, just getting, yeah. getting as many wins as you can tonight would have been a great one to get, but look, right. Like, People are going to come on here and be like, hey, man, it's one game. Well, now it's more than one game because you can make a case this is the most irreplaceable guy on the entire yeah. roster, um, and he's hurt. And it's right. frustrating, and he looked really good tonight for the most part. He did. He looked good. Um, So it's tough. And, and you look at it like, yes, the Cubs have depth, in air quotes, depth. Right, right. But the depth is just another word like, Okay, Ben Brown might be good. Assad's fine. But they're all Smi- rookies. Smiley's over the hill. Wisniewski's yeah, yeah. not great. Tyone's hurt. Hendricks is a huge question mark. They're going to be tested. Um, right. I ultimately think that they will survive this. Wow. But, but it's going to be a grind of a year. And, and you know, to, tonight prove that. And, and the first game of the season to have your star go down. Right. You know, we're not going to come on here and start waving them. Hey, Michael Bush did look great tonight, didn't he? You know, well, great. No, you know? it's it's not. We would. That's not our show. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't that. And uh, you know, even even with a prospect surplus, Sam, when those dudes come up, either because of injury or poor performance, they're still making their major league debuts or close to it. I mean, I don't know what you're going to get out of Ben Brown on Wednesday, and he might not even pitch, by the way, at Wrigley. I'm just saying that because he's on the 40, man. He's a starter. I hope Uh, it's not Wisniewski. Gosh knows. We really don't want to see Wisniewski or or Drew Drew Smiley. No, no. Uh, Maybe more like Drew Frown, but... uh, (laughs) Oh, jeez. You know, Ben Brown. I don't have have time for that tonight, dude. Okay. Well, I I was trying to get a little bit of laughs in. No, no, no. People people are commenting, Sam's watching the TV in the corner. It's halftime, so I'm not watching anything. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what people say afterwards. Uh, Yeah, come on, Can I just make the the thing, because I just know what we're going to get. 
Go ahead. The, tr- the Trevor Bauer thing, it's not a baseball thing. There's there's stuff about the story no. that none of us know. If nobody's touching 30 it, teams passed. Yeah, so so please stop it. I that's my that's my biggest question. What about Bauer? What about Bauer? It's almost like I got to put my my law degree uh in place and that doesn't exist. Right, right. Um No, the Cubs are going to be internal on this, I would guess. Can I ask you a question because in in the 10th inning it I, is a I talk had, show. Go ahead. I had the game on mute because the Illinois game. So was did on. I. I was oh, disgusted. Oh. oh well, then you're not going to be able to answer my question. What was your question? I can make up an answer. Did people think Morell's ball was gone? It felt foul to me right away. I was visualizing him hitting a granny, so I was yeah. jacked. Yeah, but it did look foul off the bat. Yeah, he looked great tonight. Yeah, yeah he looked he great slumping. tonight. Bush looked great tonight. Um, yeah. Say it hit a couple balls hard. Bellinger looked like Bellinger. I mean, there right. there was plenty of. I, hey, I do I do got to give you a pat on the back though. What you for? Said Not go, for you, Hector Neris, I hope. No, you said going in. Out. You said going into the year that you you had some questions about El Monte, and that was a bad effort by him. Yeah, and he. Uh, Can I just he say this? Threw one down the middle to Garcia on our spaces. Here's the two things I said with the Rangers. Seeger swings at the first pitch every time he did, and 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 Naris laid one into them. And you can't make mistakes and throw strikes to Garcia, or he's going to kill you. He's one of the best hitters on the planet. He's the he's he is one of the best mistake hitters in right. the world. Right. And he hit a ball that almost landed right in my dad's lap. Do you have uh, an opinion on who should start Wednesday? You know what? That's kind of my territory. Can I be honest with you? Uh, I would hope you would be, yes. My brain isn't functioning the way it normally does right now, so I don't have an opinion on it. My vote would just be not Wisniewski. Gotcha. All right. Coming up next, we're going to talk about the rest of the series. All right, we're back here on Lockdown Cubs. You got me or no? Oh, yeah, I got you. Okay, because I got my 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 Wi-Fi symbol up here. No, I got you. Uh, Hendricks and Wicks, the rest of the series for the Cubs in Arlington. The Rangers haven't announced their starters yet. Uh, they're picking from a trio of John Gray, Andrew Heaney, and Dane Dunning. Yep. Um, so we'll see about that. Hendricks and Wicks, ground ball pitchers. Maybe we see Morella third. Maybe we don't. Yep. Uh, Maya likely to start a catcher on Saturday for Hendo. And then maybe we see Talkman at DH or left field if Hap gets a game at DH. What do you think? I do. You, you do. You'd probably do need to do a a, a okay. pullout. But I, I I'm gonna. I'll, I'll keep going. I can talk about this series. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the rest of the series is, uh, you know, you got Hendricks going, you got Wicks going. You know, I don't really, I, I don't really know. You know. <sighs> Like it, it, it feels irresponsible to come out and say, "Hey, the Cubs need to win this and this, one of the two. I, I gotta tell you, I don't, I don't love, I don't love the matchup uh, with Hendricks against this lineup. He's a pitch to contact guy, and this team is is really tough. Wicks, kind of the same thing, but um, you know, the best you could do is is go out, forget about this. There's 162 games. As long as we get a as long as as long as we get Justin Steele back, and by the time he steps back on the mound, the Cubs are still in a decent place in the division. That's pretty much all you could ask for. Um, but uh, you know, to to me, previewing the next couple games and talking about all these things, it's 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 hard to do because you know we lost our our ace pitcher um, in the fourth or fifth inning of the game. And what was so what was so frustrating about that play is when when whoever it was, I think it was Tavares, if I remember, but I'm not sure. Whoever it was, when he squared around a bunt, um, I, I couldn't believe it. it. It was a it was a man on first, one out situation. It's not really a bunt situation unless you're bunting for a hit. And it almost looked like Steele kind of. It just it was such an awkward play. Is uh, you know what I what I'm trying to get to, and it was just so frustrating because a bunt there is such a um, unprobable, not probable play. And then you get into Merriweather came in after that. And that was another decision I thought by council that was a little bit eyebrow raising. I mean, I know they were facing the middle of the order there as a fifth inning, but he used Merriweather pretty early in the game. I thought we would see um, him later. But uh, anyways, I know I know Matt's having some technical difficulties. I think he's coming in right now. Somebody just said in the chat, I agree with it. 
um, that hamstring injuries sometimes can lead to arm injuries. Um, and so that's something obviously that we have to uh, be aware of as Matthew Cozy has joined us. We need, we can't hear you, <laughs> but um, you know, we'll have to see, we'll have to see what happens. Are you back, Matthew? There he is. I hear you, Matt. All right, place your votes. What was worse? Was it the Cubs loss, the steel injury, or my current setup? Place your votes uh, right now. If you're watching on demand or the replay, you could hit me up on X, which I'm probably not going to be on on Friday because I'm disgusted about this game. <laughs> and uh, I won't, probably won't check the comments either. Just got to be honest with everybody. Uh, goal is yeah. in one of the next two. Yep. And I'm sure you said that, Sam. Uh, Cubs are going to be heavy underdogs on Saturday, I think, <laughs> about even on Sunday. And I hope they can come back to Wrigley 1 and 2. I mean, we did float on the show that that was the goal. Uh, I know it's not a, a, a high bar, but we did say 1 and 2. I, at least that, I had that on my spreadsheet with the first 32 games. Um, so if they do that, fine. But this night was marked by the hamstring injury to steal. Uh, Cubs did have three leads in this one, but lose. And uh, we're going to be back Monday to recap the Cubs Rangers series and more, including hopefully updates uh, on the Cubs number one pitcher. Sam, what's the Cubs record when they come back to Wrigley Monday? What do you think? One and two. One and two. Uh, I, th I think. I think tonight is 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 go to sleep. Um, look, if I were to tell you what the worst case scenario. Wait, what was? What did you just say? Go to sleep. That's After, just the. That's the plan for tonight. There's nothing else to do. Every, everything's gone poorly. If you, unless you like basketball, um, if I were to tell you what's the worst case scenario for tonight, it would be Justin Steele gets hurt, the Cubs lost, so that's what happened. Tomorrow right. they're tomorrow they're off. The weekend will be better. And um, it's 162 games. There's a lot of baseball to be played. All right. Well, I'm going to try to stick to that. I, I know that, but it's hard. It's hard tonight. So, all right. We'll be back Monday recapping Cubs Rangers, previewing Cubs Rockies, and more. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked on Cubs.